Hello everyone, I'm Mike D'Angelo with That's Entertainment, and this is your Lost Gems review of Pikmin 2 by Nintendo. Many of the greatest minds in gaming obviously have very overactive imaginations. How else can you explain the likes of shooters like Doom and Duke Nukem, or brainier games like Bust a Move or Puzzle Quest? Each of these titles were spawned from a great idea, and helped along by the input of their creators. Nintendo, luckily, is blessed with one of the most prolific game designers in the history of gaming, Shigeru Miyamoto. Responsible for pretty much the rise of home consoles thanks to games like Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda, Miyamoto has been aiding the company since before the release of the 1979 arcade title Sheriff. Of course, not every game is going to end up drawing from the same inspiration as others, and even Miyamoto has some interesting tales to tell. As an example, take for instance the 2001 title Pikmin and its 2004 sequel. The series was inspired by the time that the designer spent in his garden, hence the simplistic basis that the game had when it was released. As a franchise matures though, things are bound to get a little more complicated. With that in mind, does Pikmin 2 stray too far from its predecessor? After spending time on the mysterious planet from the first Pikmin game, Captain Olimar returns to planet Hakati and finds his employer in shambles. Due to some terrible luck, the company has had the misfortune of selling off its assets and closing up shop for good. Even Olimar's ship, the SS Dolphin, is taken away. All the commotion has the intrepid captain dropping a souvenir from the planet, a single bottle cap. Akatate's lone remaining ship analyzes the treasure and shows that it is worth a whopping 100 pokos, more than a year's worth of Olimar's salary. With hope renewed, the boss sends Olimar back to the strange planet, together with another employee named Louie. Both of them will have to work together to make sure that they can salvage enough resources to save Hakate from dwindling in obscurity. Once Olimar and Louie head toward the planet, they are separated and must find their way back to each other. Once reunited, the Hakate workers will have to explore the savage world once more and search for all the treasure they can find. While things may at first seem very much like the first game in the series, Pikmin 2 brings a lot of new features to the table. The basics remain fairly much the same. Olimar or Louie can recruit Pikmin to perform a variety of tasks for them, including moving heavy objects, destroying obstacles, or defeating enemies. The concept is almost like a 3D Lemmings game, where Olimar or Louie only guide others, and never actually get their own hands dirty. Just like in the prior game, red, blue, and yellow Pikmin are available to help salvage treasures from the planet. Unlike the first game, there are now five different colored Pikmin to utilize, including the ultra-powerful purple Pikmin, as well as the poison-resistant, subterranean-dwelling white Pikmin. Using these two new Pikmin properly can mean the difference between success and failure on the increasingly harsh planet. With the inclusion of Louie in the mix, things are slightly different this time around. You can separate your Pikmin between both of the Hakate employees, with each acting as a commanding leader. The puzzles require a little more thought or finesse this time around, and the purple Pikmin definitely add to the challenge. Additionally, some other changes were made to the game. There is no longer a time limit to the game. While the day still ends after a certain amount of time, you are free to go back the day after without incurring any penalties. Sprays aid your Pikmin by augmenting their abilities, or can be used to freeze enemies. Caves also frequent the landscape, leading to some more ferocious encounters. Going from the first Pikmin to the sequel, it may seem like not much has changed aesthetically. Obviously, the graphics have been touched up to some extent, and the terrain looks either more lush or more solitary, depending on the locales. The addition of the subterranean levels and the two new Pikmin types also help to push the game into a bigger scope. If it wasn't for the tiny white ones, even the Pikmin would be easier to distinguish. The music and sounds of the game are pretty much identical to the prior one. The planet has a very nature-y feel to it, and the quirky little Pikmin hum along together to the same overly repetitive tune. The added Pikmin, as well as another surprise set of recruits, definitely allows for more variety in the game. With that in mind, Nintendo saw fit to expand on the 30 collectible items from the first game. In Pikmin 2, there are a total of 201 treasures to excavate from the planet's caves and surfaces. Some extra thought and a little luck go a long way in finding all of the items. The game also features some other content. A two-player battle mode pits Olimar and Louie against each other, using Pikmin to steal marbles from opposing bases. The duel also features some fun penalties and rewards for collecting a special item. 
helping you to effectively crush your opponent. Additionally, a challenge mode can be unlocked later in the single player game, which lets two players work cooperatively against a time limit. When considering how these games came to fruition, it's odd to think that they were conceived by something as simple as a man gardening. Yet, after all this time, Captain Olimar and the little seedling creatures have come a long way. Not only have they made great strides within their own series, including a re-release of the titles with Wii controls, but they have also proved to be a fun cameo appearance throughout several other Nintendo games. Olimar and his little friends even made it into the final cut of the latest Smash Brothers game. With its ongoing success, Pikmin proves that simplistic ideas can end up with fantastic results. That's Entertainment Awards Pikmin 2, a score of 8.5 out of 10.